I should tell you, I am not, as you well know, not totally on my game having just recovered from COVID. Yes, COVID. Do you remember COVID? Thing. You know, I was going to drop that into our discussion here in a way that was going to be surprising. Surprising. Yeah. Okay. Well, having just had COVID, it may still be surprising to me, at least, um, not being entirely on my game. Um, well, I have stepped on uh, on that presentation, but I will say uh, it is, I had one rough night, treated it aggressively from the get-go. Uh, spent five days in isolation. Are you on, feeling horsey? Uh, I did not take horse pace proper, but I certainly did take some medications that uh, are well understood by those who well understand things uh, to to address COVID symptoms. Be useful to uh, treat a wide variety of problems in both people and other organisms, including horses. Right, including horses. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but anyway, I will say I had a very mild case it was quite annoying in the sense of you know every time you get sick with this disease you have to think about how much uh damage it does and although it's not a very dangerous disease uh to those of us who are healthy at this point it is certainly does damage across a wide number of systems which is troubling and you know as we talked about extensively at the beginning of the pandemic there is this question. Those who called this thing forth from a bat cave and enhanced it have inflicted something on us permanently. And okay, so maybe you get COVID every year or two and it compromises a week of your life. And presumably for reasons that we will talk about later on the, in the podcast, uh, accelerates uh, your rate of aging across multiple tissues. I'm sorry, Zach, can I get a towel? The cat just spilled a bunch of water all over the deck. Um, this is not as bad as the pandemic, but it's bad. I'm sorry, I admit so, that. I buy my computer maybe about to fritz out because I got a situation. Anyway. Where, well, it's just, it's on the cords and such. Just You can just throw it to me. I'll just deal with it. We're, we're good. Okay. Yes. Go on. Go on. <laughs> what were we talking about? Uh, you were talking yes, about... Yes, we were talking about the tissue damage. But anyway, my point is... One of the things that I said early on in our discussions was that the cost of the pandemic, no matter how mild this disease gets, is effectively indefinitely large if we right. let it get to the point that we are permanently stuck with COVID. And that is where we appear to be. It is now people, even people oh, we're who stuck with it. believed yeah. that it might be addressed and driven to extinction early, no longer believe that. I no longer think it's possible with current tech to drive it to extinction. And so anyway, there's a point about what if we just take all of my future cases of COVID until I am gone from whatever uh, thing ultimately takes me out. Right? How many weeks of my life are going to be compromised by somebody's idiotic decision to in Gauge and gain of function research on uh, bat coronaviruses, right? That's a huge cost, even just to me personally. And then if you scale that up across all of the people of the earth who are going to be suffering from something, even if it's just cold like, right? If you have right. seven more colds in your life that are the result of Anthony Fauci, right? That's a pretty big cost for one dude to inflict on you personally <laughs> um, for his own idiocy. Yeah. And, and that's that's the, the least of what might be going on. And that is the least. And again, as I will discuss later on in the podcast, a proper model of the biology underlying this says that it's not just the weeks that you lose because you're sick. That is all borrowing from your lifetime capacity to repair your own tissues. And so the point is it is accelerating your rate of death. The, re the reason most of us do not reach the maximum human age is that over the, a lifetime, we spend the resources that might get you to 120, fending off, you know, flus, damage, all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and anyway, so they have now added another one. Even if it's a mild disease that we get periodically and it's just annoying, the cost is still uh, arbitrarily huge. This is absolutely true. And, um, and of course, it's also true that, um, you know, it, it's hard to meet anyone now or to hear of anyone really who hasn't had it at this point. And so, you know, many people, you know, m most people have some sort of a mild case and, and it's fine, right? They appear to be fine um, with all of the caveats that you have just made. Um, but even, even then, many, many people will report feeling like this isn't like other 
viruses. This isn't like other respiratory infections that I've had. It feels different. It feels it feels alien in a way. And you know, of course, it you know it's it's a Franken virus. So uh, you know that's not all that surprising. But the idea that it might it might just be oh uh, we've introduced another thing that's going to circulate indefinitely, and you're going to be exposed to it, and you're going to get it indefinitely. Uh, it's really unlikely that it's going to be that that shallow a uh, an, an impact so let's just say uh what we're some of the stuff we're going to talk about today um are some um you, you've got a, a couple little clips uh from the uh the excellent john campbell to show and discuss uh some of the implications uh with regard to uh COVID and the pandemic uh i'd like to following that i'd like to talk about a paper um a uh, paper that was published, I guess it's last month, uh, purporting to show that while infections, COVID infections are higher after you've been vaccinated than after you've had COVID itself, uh, visits to emergency rooms and hospitalizations and deaths are higher among the un among those who have natural immunity but aren't vaccinated as opposed to those who are vaccinated. So I want to just, that seems like a, a, a that's certainly a very important result, if so, and uh, it contradicts what a lot of us have been suggesting. So I want to walk through that paper a little bit. And uh, and then if we have time, I'd be interested in talking a little bit about um, stigma, stigma and shame, uh, based on a recent piece that I read and some things that are sort of happening in in the cultural space around around various behaviors and predilections that people have. 